if we ever want to be able to live on other planets, we need to find a way to make them more Earth-like, a process that's been dubbed terraforming. The ideal test project is Mars. Today I want to tell you about a new idea for how to terraform Mars, which is crazy of course, but if we don't think about it, we'll never make it happen. So let's have a look. Mars isn't all that different from Earth. It's our next neighbor planet about 100 million kilometers further away from the Sun than we are. With current propulsion systems, it'd take about seven months to get there. Mars is noticeably smaller than Earth with about a tenth of the mass and a third of the gravitational pull. It has an atmosphere, but it's very thin and unbreathable for us. It contains basically no oxygen and is mostly carbon dioxide and nitrogen. We could live in habitats with breathable air. But there is another big issue with Mars. The larger distance from the sun and lack of a warming atmosphere makes it very cold. The average temperature is just about minus 60 degrees Celsius or minus 80 Fahrenheit. But there is good news too. We know that there is water on Mars. There's ice on the poles and more ice underground. So we have water, soil, sunshine and carbon carbon dioxide, which is not such a bad combination if it wasn't just too cold. This is why most of the plans for terraforming Mars begin with trying to warm it up so that the water melts. This could make the soil fertile and allow plants to grow. One way to warm Mars would be to add more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And there is some carbon dioxide left on Mars, but it's also frozen at the poles and in the ground and it is isn't enough. This remaining carbon dioxide alone would only raise the temperature by 10 degrees at most. Some researchers have suggested using artificial greenhouse gases like chlorofluorocarbons to warm Mars. But the chemical elements to produce them, notably fluoride, are rare on Mars. The authors of the new paper now have a pretty ingenious idea. It's to use the dust which is everywhere on Mars. Mars dust is already in the atmosphere. You can see this in some of the photos. Normally it has a somewhat cooling effect on the surface because it reflects light. But the authors of the paper point out that this isn't because of the constituents of the dust. It's because of the typical size of the grains. They're fairly large. If you grind the dust to nanometer sized particles, it'll become very good at absorbing radiation in the infrared. So it'd warm the planet it and it would warm it substantially enough to melt the ice. You see this here in this figure which shows the temperature dependence on the density of the nanoparticles. For reference, the freezing point of water is at about 273 Kelvin and the average temperature on Earth is roughly 288 Kelvin. This figure shows the result of a climate model calculation for Mars. The blue line in the middle is the average temperature and the shaded region is the seasonal variation. Since the temperatures are higher near the equator, some of the ice starts melting in the Mars summer past the white triangle. Better still, they say that within a couple of months, the temperatures would be high enough for the frozen carbon dioxide to melt, which would increase the atmospheric pressure to about a fifth that of Earth and add some further warming. One thing they didn't discuss in the paper though, is that there's a reason Mars doesn't have an atmosphere. It's that it doesn't have a magnetic field and that allowed solar wind to rip the atmosphere away. So if you want to get any atmosphere on Mars to last, you'll have to think of a way to fix that problem. A few years ago, two physicists suggested that this problem could be fixed with a big superconducting wire around Mars. So that'd have to be about 3,400 kilometers long. Clearly, we won't be doing any of this in the near future. But I like looking at mega projects like this or the idea to build a giant chimney to cool Earth or an elevator into space. It's because the challenge in getting these things done isn't technological, it's economical. We don't have the capacity to pull it off, not yet. But if we play it smartly, we'll get there. And who wouldn't want to have a second planet to screw up?
Nature is amazing. What we've done to nature hasn't always been so amazing. But there's an amazingly simple way to help nature help itself by joining me in supporting Planet Wild. Each month, Planet Wild embarks on a new mission, which they document with videos right here on YouTube. Whether it's planting trees, reintroducing animals to forests where they once thrived, or using drones to study blue whales, Planet Wild is making a real difference for nature preservation. For their most recent mission, they've returned to Germany, where they're working on bringing back these cute little owls. Thanks to the growing Planet Wild community, they've had more more than six times as much funding as last year. And with every new member, their impact grows. Planet Wild makes a real difference, one mission at a time. I've already joined them and I hope you'll too. If you use my link in the description below or scan the QR code, then I'll cover the first month of your subscription if you're among the first 200 to sign up using my code. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.